Hello everyone and welcome to my Word of the Week. I will be taking my message from the JSM Word for Every Day. I will be reading Romans chapter 7 verse 18. For I know that in me, that is my flesh, dwells no good thing. For to will is present with me, but how to perform that which is good, I find not. Most Christians think that when a person comes to Christ, the Lord gives them an extra strong willpower. Consequently, they now have, they think, the power to say no to sin. None of that is correct. It may come to a shock and a surprise to most Christians, but the devil can easily override the willpower of a person. The only willpower that the Lord gives a person is the will to say yes to Christ, which is, in fact, very important. This means that the worst sinner in the world, for example, one totally bound by alcohol or drugs, who cannot say no to those vices, can, if he so desires, say yes to Christ. It is the same principle with the believer. The Lord doesn't really give the believer the capacity to say no to sin because we are dead to sin. A dead man doesn't say anything. In this newness of life, however, we are given the capacity to say yes to Christ and his way, which is the way of the cross. That is where the will of man begins and ends. The believer does not overcome by willpower. He overcomes by faith. Let me say that again. The believer does not overcome by willpower. He overcomes by faith. This means that I have repeatedly stated faith in Christ and the cross. Galatians 6 and 14. If one studies the life of the Apostle Paul, one must come to the conclusion that he was a man with a strong constitution. I personally believe that Paul had an extremely strong willpower. However, he very clearly states in Romans 7, 18, that he had the will to live the life he knew he ought to live. But how to perform that which is good, he found not. His willpower, in other words, simply, simply was not good enough and neither is yours. Law as a barrier to the will excites it, and the consciousness of sin thereby awakened produces in the presence of God a conscience under sentence of death. Thus the commandment ordained unto life becomes, in fact, the instrument of death. This do and you shall live became death to man, because his sinful nature refused to obey, and in so refusing his own conscience, it condemned him to death. Thus the law was holy, and each of his commandments just and good, but it condemned to death all who failed to render to it a perfect obedience, as condemn it must. Such is the effort of divine law upon man's carnal nature. The rest of this seventh chapter illustrates the doctrine by showing how fruitless is the effort of the old man to live as the new man. There is simply no such thing as moral evolution. Self cannot control self. The flesh cannot control the flesh. If the believer is trying to live for God by any means other than faith in Christ and the cross, no matter how hard he tries, he will find himself sinking deeper and deeper in the swamp of sin. That means the situation will become worse and worse. There is no victory in trying harder. There is victory only in Christ and the cross. And that concludes my message of the week. And remember, 
that God loves you. Victory can only be found in Jesus Christ. Let me say that again. Victory can only be found in Jesus Christ. One cannot overcome the world, the flesh, and the devil by willpower. If we could do that, then Jesus Christ would not have had to come to this earth to go to the old rugged cross. So I say to you, let your roots grow deep in Christ and your faith be anchored in Christ and his finished work and nothing else and set yourself apart unto God on a daily basis and yield to the power of the Holy Spirit and let him do the work in you that only he can do. And he can do anything because he is God and God can do anything. God bless.